Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be building an Amazon price tracker. So basically how this is going to work is every time. So let's say you really want to buy an item, but the price of it is just way too high. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this program and it's going to keep checking the price on a regular basis. And every time or any time the price drops, it's going to send you an email alerting you that the price has dropped. So if the price has dropped to a low enough price that you're comfortable buying it, then it's a win-win situation. You get an amazing deal for the thing you really want to buy. So let's see how we can make this and how it's actually just a really simple process. And simultaneously, this is a really good introduction to the whole concept of web scraping. All right, so let's get right into it. So our first step is going to be to actually go to the website and we want to get the information we want. So in this case, we actually want the price. So our first step is to create some sort of function which goes to the Amazon website and gets us the price. All right. So to do that, we're going to import beautiful soup. So that's import BS4 and we're going to also import URL lib dot request. So basically what this does, it helps us to open up a web page. Okay, so now over here, we're gonna uh, put the URL that we're actually looking for. Our first step is going to be to actually pick out an item that we wanna check the price of. So for the past couple of days, I've really been wanting to buy this costume. It's a dinosaur costume and of course, who doesn't want it? So dinosaur costume for adults. And well, this one looks really good. Actually, this one looks better. So I'm going to choose this. And this is the link I'm going to be using. So while this dinosaur suit or costume is amazing, I'm not willing to spend 4,500 rupees. So I need to look for a better price. So I'm going to wait until the price goes down. So I'm going to copy this link over here. I'm going to go back to our program. We're going to paste it over here. Okay, so now we have the URL. So now we're gonna create a variable called sauce. And over here, we're gonna send a request to the URL and we're gonna basically uh, read its contents. So to do that, we're gonna do URL lib dot request dot URL open and then we're, given, we're gonna give the URL. So we'll just call the variable. And we wanna read uh, the HTML element, so dot read. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this into a beautiful soup object. So we can, we're gonna call a variable called soup and we're gonna do BS4 dot beautiful soup and we're gonna put in the sauce and we're gonna call in the HTML parser. So this is basically gonna run through our HTML. So if we print soup dot prettyfy, uh, the only reason I'm calling prettyfy is because it's just going to indent the code and make it look a lot better. So let's see how this looks like. Okay, so as you can see over here, uh, we got the entire HTML code for the Amazon uh, web page. But we don't really need all of this. All we actually need, we just need the price. So how can we get that? So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to inspect element and we want to look for this price over here. Okay. And one observation we can make is this price is inside has an ID of price block underscore our price. We're going to look for this ID inside of our HTML. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called price and we're going to find that specific ID. So soup dot find, and we're just going to paste that over here. ID equals to price block underscore our price. Uh, and so what that's going to do is going to print out the entire tag. So instead, we just want to get the text. So we're going to call the get text uh, function on that. So get text. And now let's see how our prices look like. Okay, so as you can see, we get the price, but I'm pretty sure as it is, this is a string. So we can't really use it to do any uh, calculations or that sort. 
So to convert it into a floating point, what we're going to do is we're going to first remove the comma and we're also going to remove the rupee sign. So I'm just going to copy that and let's see how we can do that. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to prices and we're going to make it a floating point. So float and inside of that, what we're going to do is price.replace and first we're going to put what do we actually want to replace. So we want to replace the comma and what do we want to replace it with? We're just going to replace it with nothing. Uh, and then we're going to call the replace function again, but this time we're going to call it on the rupee sign. So that sign over there. And again, we're going to replace it with nothing. So now let's print out the prices and let's also print out what, oh sorry. And we're also going to see what type of variable prices actually is. Okay, so now let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, so as you can see, so we over here we just get the number 4,499 and we have a class of float. So it is a float. Uh, it's a floating point object. So we can use that for further calculation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this inside of a function called check price. And we're going to put this all inside of that function. And one more thing we're going to do is each time we call this function, we're going to add the price to some sort of list. So let's make a list over here, prices list. And it's going to be an empty list in the beginning. And, but each time we call this uh, check price function, we're going to add the price to the list. So prices dot list, uh, sorry, prices underscore list dot append, and we're going to add the prices. Okay, so this is our first part of the project. Now, our second part is going to be to be able to send an email through our program to alert the user when the price has gone down. In order to send an email, we're going to be using the SMTP lib library. So to do that, we're going to import SMTP lib. Now after that, we're going to create a function called send email and it's going to take in the argument of a message. So that is actually what we want to send. Now, to be honest, I am not 100% sure what this code does, but uh, or how it actually works. But I have used this for my previous projects and it always seems to work. So what you're going to do, the only difference, uh, so these two are going to stay the same, but what you're, over here, you're going to log in to the email, which is going to be sending the emails. So this is one of my secondary emails, Anish testing one, two, three, four, and then you're going to give it the, our, your password. So I actually didn't write out my password, but you're just going to write in whatever your password is inside of the uh, quotation marks. Okay. And one more thing you need to make sure is when you're doing this, you need to make sure that the sending email, so whatever this email is, whatever is actually going to be sending out the mails, has to, you need to uh, turn this option on. So just search up uh, less secure apps Gmail turn on, and then I got this link, so it's the first link. So what this basically does is it allows the SMTP lib, uh, the library to access your email and send emails from there. So just for safety purposes, uh, I would advise you to not do this on your main account. So just create like a side account which you can uh, do for such projects. So that's what I have and you're gonna turn this on. Okay, so once you have that on, then again, you're gonna do send s.sendmail and for sending the mail, first you're gonna put in uh, the email which is gonna be sending the email then this is the email which is receiving it. So I just put in my personal email and over here we're gonna put a message. So let's see if this works or not. So let's just call the send email function and let's just put a random message of hi there. Okay, so let's run this. Oh, okay, I forgot to add my password, but yeah, I'm gonna add my password over here and then it should work. Okay, so it says the process is finished. 
So now let me go and check my email real quick. Okay, so over here we have the email sent from Anish testing one, two, three, four, and it just says hi there. So this is how we're gonna notify the user that we're done, that uh, the price has gone down. Okay, so now let's just put this all together. Before we can actually put this all together, we have to make one last function. So we're gonna call, so this function is basically gonna check if the price actually decreased or not. So we're just gonna call it price decrease check. So this is gonna check if our price decreased or not. And what is what arguments is this gonna take in? So it's gonna take in the argument of, uh, price of the price list that we have. So what we're gonna do is, we're, so each time we check our price, we're adding a price to our price list. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the latest price, so the latest price is gonna be the last element. So prices underscore list, so the last element is negative one. So if the last element is less than its previous element, so prices underscore list, negative two. So if this is true, that means that the prices did decrease. So in that case, we're just gonna return a value of true. But if that is not true, we're just gonna repeat return false. So if it's the same or if it's higher, we're just gonna return false. Cause we only care for if the price went down. And uh, you could specify how, like you could specify how low you want the price to be before the email actually gets sent out. But instead what I'm gonna do is, anytime, even if the price decreases by a couple hundred rupees, even then we're gonna check, uh, we're gonna uh, send an email to the user. Okay, so now we're gonna put this all inside of a final while loop. So we're gonna make this infinite, so while true, so it's gonna keep running. So our first step is going to be to check the price. So current price equals to check underscore price. So one thing we forgot to do in our function here is uh, we forgot to return the price. So all we're gonna do is return prices over here. Okay, so once we do this, we're gonna, uh, the current price is gonna have the value of the price. And then our next step is going to be to check if the price is uh, low. So I'm just gonna call a variable called flag, and we're gonna call the check price function. Sorry, uh, price decrease check function. And inside of that function, we're gonna give it the price list. And now what we're gonna do is, if this comes out as true, that means that the price decreased. So if flag, we're gonna set a message, which is uh, the price has decreased, decreased, uh, please check the item. And one more thing we could add is, to make this even more better, we can add by how much the price decreased. So to do that, we can just calculate decrease, which equals, so we're gonna uh, decrease, which equals to the last element in the prices list, minus the element before that. So prices underscore list minus two. So this is how much the price decreased by. So we're just gonna use the F string and we're gonna say the price decreased by, then we're gonna put in how much it decreased by, so decrease by that many rupees. And now we need to actually send this. So then we're gonna call the send email and we're gonna call message. Now the only problem with this is that in our first iteration, what's gonna happen is when we call the price check uh, function, we're gonna actually have an index error because uh, in the beginning, we're only gonna have one element. So price underscore list negative two is not gonna, in, uh, not gonna be there. So just to solve that, we can just make a count in the beginning, which starts off with the value one and each time the count increases by one. So what we do is 
we're only going to check if the price decreased when the count is greater than one. So in that case, our prices list has more has a minimum of two elements. So if count greater than one, we're going to run both of these. So we're going to indent everything by one. And now one last thing that we want to do is when we're doing this, what's going to happen is it's going to send a request to our web page every time we iterate through this while loop. And if we uh, send so many requests, there might be a point where we're not able to send any more requests. So a more logical way to look at the situation is instead of sending requests like every one second, because the price is not going to change every second. If anything, what we can do is we can check for the change in price uh, every single day or every 12 hours. So what we're going to do is to do that, we're going to import the time package. So import time. And then uh, we're going to call it over here. So time.sleep. So basically what this function over here does is, so if you give time.sleep1, so it's going to run all of this. And once it reaches this, it's going to wait for one second to do the next step. So what we're going to do is we need to make it wait for half a day. So how much is half a day in seconds? One day in seconds is actually going to be 60 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 24. So we actually just want how long it takes for half a day. So that's actually just going to be uh, 60 into 60 multiplied by 12. So that's around 43,000 seconds. So we're just going to put in that value. So 43,000. So basically what this does is it's going to run all of this and then it's going to wait for half a day and only then it's going to check the price again. So now let's run it. And then, well, it's running, but we don't actually we're not actually going to see any results. But what's going to happen is every time the price does decrease, it's going to send us a mail. But until then, we're just going to wait. And this is just going to keep running in the background. Uh, and once the price does decrease, we can use it to our benefit and get our whatever our item is for the best price. And if anything, I think this is a really good introduction to the whole idea of web scraping. And uh, starting off from this, you can do a lot more projects. And you could make a few additions to this uh, by yourself. For example, what I did is I used pandas in order to uh, put everything inside of a CSV. So over here, it's going to first put the time and date, and then it's going to put the price. So and this is going to update every day. So you can see uh, how the price changes every day, and you're going to have a list of the change. And yeah, and you could add a few other features, such as instead of just looking for the price of one item, you could look at the price for several items. But I think this introduces a, a basic concept, and it's a really good starting point for the whole idea of web scraping. Thanks a lot for watching the video, and do let me know what you thought about it in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you.